Welcome, welcome. Be holy, be perfect community. Yes, I say community because a community that is set apart to God, to live for God. And I know that everyone <laughs> don't want to hear the this type of teaching, and that's that's fine. You know, they didn't hear want to hear what uh, God says, and you know that's you know that's that's what it is. So let's not be discouraged. Uh, when people don't want to hear what the uh what God say, you know, <laughs> why you think they crucified Jesus? They didn't want to hear what he had to say. Why you think that sometimes he just left the area? Why? Because they didn't want to hear what he had to say, and that life is like that. So don't be discouraged. You know, be encouraged that the Lord has put it in your heart, and that you're obedient to the Lord when he asks you to speak to someone. Uh, he know from the beginning who's going to receive him and who's not. And don't, don't uh, concern yourself with that. You know, pray that you have did exactly what the Lord said and that you were not the hindrance or I was not the hindrance to the person receiving or receiving or not receiving and, uh, you know, but we need to let's stay on subject. You know, the Lord just put that in my heart. And mothers, mothers, when we, yes, I'm still talking about being baptized into Jesus, being baptized into death, being baptized into death. I'm still talking about that. That is still the subject. But I just want to say this, mothers, when your children go astray, do what you can, but the m most important thing to do is what? Is to spend time on your knees in prayer, confessing your sins and their sins, that the Lord will bring them into his kingdom. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's all that needs to be done. Now, to the subject. Baptized into Jesus, baptized into his death. We're in part four. And yes, what shall we say to all this? Are we to remain in sin? Are we to remain in the muck of the evil one? Are we to remain in sin in order that grace and favor and mercy may multiply and overflow? That was a question. And Paul answered it himself. He says, certainly not. How can we die? We who died to sin live in it any longer. I mean, that's a question. <laughs> Answer it. <laughs> you know, it's an exam. The Lord is saying, examine yourself. Examine. I need to examine myself. I need to examine myself. If, 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 how can I who died to sin, live in it any longer. I need to write an essay on that. You know, oh yeah, I'm being humorous, but I'm being true. I'm being honest. I'm saddened in my heart because we uh, go to the sanctuary, uh, well, what we call the sanctuary, and we just don't get it. Just don't get it. How can we who died to sin live in it any longer? That's the question. Answer that. Take some time today and answer that. Answer the Lord on that. Answer the Lord on that question. Romans chapter 6, verse 14. For sin shall not, shall not any longer exert dominion over you. <laughs> See, the king saying, king saying, and king of sinners, the children of disobedience. Yes, that's what he's saying. The king of sin, the prince of darkness, shall not any longer exert dominion over you, since now you are not under the law. What law? <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. You are not under the law. What law? The law of sin and death. But under grace. What is the law of grace? What is the law of grace? 
the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. See, there are two laws that we operate under the law of sin and death, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Just go to Roman 8. He'll, he'll, he'll explain all that. We went over that. He say, but under grace as subjects of God's favor and mercy. Subjects, subjects, subjects. What do subjects mean? He's not talking about a topic. He's talking about bond servants. We're slaves unto God. We are yoked like two, two oxen. <laughs> yes, okay, I have a vivid imagination. Yes, yes, we're yoked to God. We're subjects. Here, we are his subjects of God's favor and mercy. We are his bond servants. Instead of being slaves of the devil, we are now slaves of God. And we are slaves of God because... We accept his favor and his mercy. And this is why he says, For sin shall not have dominion over you. In other words, sin should be ruling our life. We be, shouldn't be trying to pull the get out of jail card of uh, Romans chapter 3, 21, I believe, when it says, All men have fallen short to the glory of God. See, Paul is either a schizophrenic or we don't understand what he was saying. And here he clarifies that. For sin shall not any longer exert dominion over you, since now you are not under what? You are not slaves to sin. Simple as that. Romans 6, 15. What then are we to conclude? What's the conclusion? What's the, what is the end of the story what is the end what 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 how do we summarize this what how do we conclude this <laughs> look get out of the muck of sin the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus have made you free from the law of sin and death look you got your break the law of sin and death that's your get out of jail card look get break free break free break free what then are we to conclude? Shall we sin because we live not under the law? <laughs> Look, not under the law, not under the law of sin and death, but under God's favor and mercy? Certainly not. Look, Paul just, you know, you go to one corner, boom, he just pop you back in. Hit you with one, then he hit you with another. You know, the double punch. He go, look. Shall we see it because we live not under the law, but under God's grace, under God's grace, favor, and mercy? Did he say no? Certainly not. So grace, grace. <laughs> Paul just blew that. He just blew that out of water. He just blew it out of the water. Kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. He blew it out of the water. Look, there's no way that we can get under. There's no way that we can go around. There's no way we can go over this. We must stop sinning in order to live for God. Grace is to empower us to be champions over sin. See? You know, say favor and mercy. People say, I'm blessed and highly favored. How can you be blessed and highly favored if you're a habitual sinner? <laughs> My God. I mean, write it on a piece of paper. Look at it. You should see the difference. It just don't add up. You know, just line it up with the word. It will not line up. Color one red and the other one blue. It won't line up. You know, I'm, yes, I'm, I'm being humorous here because it's just, Lord, help us. Shall we sin because we have grace? Shall we sin because we call ourselves not under the law of sin and death? You know, shall we, shall we? And Paul say, no, absolutely not. 
Absolutely not. So we 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 this is the a dilemma. If we don't believe what the word of God says, you know, it's just simple. He's not teaching us fake <laughs> news. <laughs> you know, Paul is trying to teach us truth. He is teaching us truth. And then he go on in Romans chapter 6, verse 16. He asked another question. See, question is a means of learning. You know, because when somebody asks a course, asks you a course, and I ask me a course, we have to think, we have to consider what they said. He said, "Do you not know that if you continually surrender yourself to anyone to do his will, you are the slaves of him, of him whom you obey?" So if we continue to bow down our flesh to sin, we are slaves of the King of Sin and the king of sinners, the children of disobedience. Because when we sin, we're disobeying God. That's all it is. We're just children of disobedience. You know, there's no big mystery. You know, there's no uh, UFO or anything like that. It's just, just that simple. He say, uh, whom you obey, whether that be to sin, which leads to death. See, two roads, two laws whether it be to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness, right doing and right standing with God, holiness. Obedience leads to holiness. Obedience leads to growth and calm, being conformed into the image and likeness of God. That's what obedience do. That's the power of obedience. And we know that the power of sin is death. So there's the two roads. There are the two choices. There are the two avenues. You know, and they each has no two-way traffic. It's only a one-way road. That's just it. Going in different directions. One way. So let us say, let us ask this question. Do you not know that if you continue surrendering yourself to, to anyone to do his will, you are the slave of him whom you obey. You are the slave of him whom you obey. So we can obey sin, which leads to death, or we can obey, we can be obedient, which leads to holiness, to perfection, to right standing and right doing. Yes, right doing with God. And this is, this is, the teaching that we should have, you know, when we bow down to sin, when we choose sin, we choose the king of sin. You know, how simple is that? How simple is that? When we choose obedience, we choose what? The law of God. What is the law of God? <laughs> the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Thou shalt not... Thou shalt not bear false witness against your neighbor. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. You know. And, but he do say, this is a law too. Do be obedient to the Lord. Yes. To love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and all your being. Yeah, that's a law. That's a rule of God. So let's understand what he means and how he mean it. The Lord love his people. So let's understand. Look, this guy, he got his get out of jail card. He's been nailed to the cross. His heart is filled with the word of God, the spirit of God, and he is moving out away from sin. He have cut that umbilical cord to sin, and he, what? on his way to holiness, on his way to God. But Romans 6, 17, he said, but thank God. Let us thank God. Let us be encouraged. But thank God, though you were once slaves of sin, you have become obedient. You have become obedient. You have become obedient with all your heart to the standard of, 
of teaching in which you were instructed and to which you were committed. What did he say? He said, you have become obedient with all your heart to the standards of teaching. What are the standards of the teaching that we receive in our congregation? What is the standard? What's the standard? Is there a standard? What's the standard of performance? Yes, I said performance. What is the standard of conduct? You know, we need to ask ourselves, is it in line with what Paul says here? Is it in line all your heart to the standards of teaching in which you were instructed and in which you were committed? See, we have to be committed to the standards of the teaching. We have to become obedient with all our heart. Romans 6 and 18. And having been set free from sin, oh my God, oh my goodness. What? He said, and having been, past tense, set free from sin. Having been set free from sin, you have become the servant of righteousness in confirming it to the divine will in thought, purpose, and action. Say that again. And having been set free from sin. So if we are set free from sin, why do we continue in it? Why do we continue in it? Why do we lie on Paul? Why do we lie on the Holy Spirit and say that we cannot stop sinning? Why do we do that? Why do we continue to be deceived by the king of sinners? Why? Is it because we want to have that rationalization so that we feel comfortable and not guilty because of our disobedience? Yes, there is your answer. You have become the servant of righteousness. This is another question. It's a statement, but it's a question. Am I a servant of righteousness? Think on that. Am I a servant of righteousness? Am I a servant of righteousness? And what do that mean, to be a servant of righteousness? Of confirming it to the divine will? Am I confirmed to the, the divine will in thought and purpose and in action to God? Am I? Am I? Am I? This is the question. <laughs> this is the question of the day. It's been several. But this is another one. This is the question. Am I? the servant of righteousness? Am I the servant of righteousness? See, it is just that simple. We don't have to go through a lot of stuff. It's just that simple. We thank God for his word. God, we thank you. We give you praise. We bless you, O oh Lord. May the Lord have mercy on us. May the Lord give us strength. May the Lord cause us to be obedient and servants of righteousness. Wow, wouldn't that be something to put on a baseball cap or a t-shirt? I am the servant of righteousness. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he shine his face upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen.